does your nose always feel a little blocked? It's more of a sensation than a reality. And this is what makes it so hard to cope with. When it's real, well, it's quite simple. You can blow it out, problem sorted. Unfortunately, the relief is often short term, but the problem is manageable. When the little critters that opened up the floodgates are taken care of, the passage clears and breathing is easy. When things don't go according to plan, it's more often than not because the culprit wasn't a bacteria. A high percentage of nasal cavity infections are caused by fungi, not bacteria. And this matters when it comes to nasal cavity exterminations. Because antibiotics do not kill fungi. Unfortunately, a course or two of inappropriate antibiotics has the potential to aggravate the problem since it encourages unwanted guests. But I digress. This story is about the stuffy nose for no apparent reason that is driving you crazy. The official name for the problem is chronic sinusitis. Now, your doctor will probably shrug his shoulders and possibly blame pollution. In exceptional circumstances, a sinus surgery might be suggested. And this can, in fact, work wonders when there's something genuinely wrong with the anatomy of the sinusoidal cavities. But when there isn't, well, the benefits of the procedure are not astounding. The blocked nose curse is one of those things, for the most part, you have to just learn to live with. Now, this problem of subjective nasal patency came on the radar of a group of European researchers, and they had the bright idea that the source of the problem was the nerve that services the nasal cavity and set about investigating. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we catch up with their musings, which might just turn out to be the cure for your blocked nose curse. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the nerve in question is the trigeminal nerve, also known as cranial nerve number five. This is a Mursa big nerve, crisscrossing your face, and it enables your face to feel, and it helps you bite and chew. The middle bit is especially involved in regulating the feelings of the nasal cavity. And it's this bit that the researchers suspected had lost its tingle. And as a consequence of this, the ability to perceive the nasal airstream has been compromised, creating the sensation of a permanent block. Now, this idea is not completely unprecedented. Maybe Vicks Vapor Rub or some other menthol-loaded product is part of your standard cold treatment regimen. Applying this to the nostrils can bring temporary relief. But studies have shown that in actual fact, nothing changes in terms of how wide the nasal passages are. Now, I didn't say it was in your imagination. It's not a placebo effect. It is very real. The trigeminal nerve servicing the cells lining the nose has the ability to feel cold thanks to the presence of cold receptors. And when it feels cold, it ends up constricting the blood vessels. And skinny blood vessels allow the air to move on by. Menthol is able to trick the cold receptors. And in the moment, the nerve responds as if the air was icy cold, bringing a moment or two of relief. Aish. It's usually only a moment or two. You see, if you keep triggering the nerve, it adjusts to the cold, in inverted commas, and loses interest, 
leaving the blood vessel enlarged and you with the sensation of a blocked nose 24 7. Now regulating airflow is very high on the agenda of this nerve but it does have a secondary function. It responds to smells, good ones, bad ones and everything in between. This propensity helps us to navigate our environment, keeping us safe. With this in mind, the researchers started experimenting, reasoning that blocked noses could be the result of lazy trigeminal nerves. They devised a plan to put these nerves on a rigorous training schedule. In the study, they signed up a collection of noses, some troubled, some healthy. At the start of the study, all the noses underwent a fitness assessment. And then each nose went home with three little glass bottles containing smells known to get a trigeminal nerve all worked up. The smell bottles had been created by soaking a cotton pad with the relevant liquid. Now the first smell was eugenol, which is a clove-like smell, the second menthol, and the third vinegar. Once the noses got home, the training began in earnest. Participants were asked to open the bottles and smell the odors for 10 seconds, four times a day, at three to four hour intervals for 70 days. At the end of the training period, the noses were invited back to the lab for a second fitness assessment. Now, the nose fitness tests involved a carbon dioxide stimulus test, as well as a spot which nostril is being exposed to a smell. There were improvements to the nose fitness in terms of the carbon dioxide sensitivity in those that diligently put their noses through their paces. Interestingly enough, the training made no real difference to the lateralization test. And this was actually a bit of a surprise. The researchers suspect afterwards that requiring the nose to sniff this, that, and the other, and then pinpoint where it was coming from was quite tedious. And well, many noses just simply lost interest. But the good news was that the training did in fact relieve the blocked nosed feelings a little bit. Self-rated nasal patency improved after the training in the noses that did the work. But truth be told, it didn't work for everyone. It turned out that age was also an issue. Unfortunately, olfactory function is one of the things that deteriorates with age. Ah. The other factor contributing to success was the origin of the problem. In this study, the patients they signed up had all sorts of reasons for knocking on the door of the ENT practice. Trauma, infection, and congenital conditions can all contribute to nose problems. The team found that odor training only helped when the problem was a lazy trigeminal nerve. But this was a problem for quite a few people. Maybe it's your problem. For an intractable nuisance condition, I think it's worth giving odor training a try. So you can begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www betterbodychemistry.com. When you're there, if you need help with a specific situation, sign up for a one-on-one health conversation. Alternatively, browse our library or enroll on one of our free courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone dealing with the curse of chronic sinusitis share this video with them so they know a possible solution to that blocked nose feeling could be to send their trigeminal nerve to odor training and if this is your first time here be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of better body chemistry tv
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.